But still, at the end of one, no score here at the Coliseum. Let's go downstairs and join Sam Marciano. Well, as you see the Isles coming off the ice, this first period has been pretty much the Washington Capitol style. They've been picking lots of fights. You know, hey, maybe they were a little annoyed that this game took a while to get going because it, it is Clark Gillies' night. And it's somewhat fitting because uh, some fighting and it is Clark Gillies' night and he's going to be Stan's guest in between the first and the second period. We'll be back with lots more right after this. tie at the end of the first period the Isles and the Washington Capitals but the man of the hour clock you know, he shots on goal the Caps big advantage 10 to 4 I think the Isles got a little bit rusty standing there during the uh, tremendous ceremonies and you know uh, clock Gillies uh, I have to tell you I cried a little bit I cried a little bit. I don't know about. I was trying to see whether you were crying a little bit uh, during that summer. I, uh, I held up better than I thought he would stand I, I thought that uh, I may not make it halfway through. My mom said, why are you bothering writing a speech? Because halfway through, you're going to be bawling your eyes out anyway. Uh, I knew I wouldn't make it too well through the, the portion where I had flashed a picture of my dad because he meant a great deal to me. But uh, it, I've, I just took the attitude that this is a great celebration, and I want it to be a celebration. And uh, I'll have my private tears, I'm sure, but uh, I'm just celebrating this thing in the biggest way, and I'm having so much fun right now. Well, we're going to take a look at the banner as it's being hauled up to the rafters, and I want to know, as this is happening, what are you thinking at this very point? Well, Stan, it's just, uh, you know, I'd seen it happen to the other fellows that have had their jerseys retired, and, and I, you know, I knew what a great moment it was for them, and I just wanted to stand there and really take it all in. It's, uh, I'm very proud of the fact that I now have my number retired, and and proud of all the guys that helped me get to this position. And as I said earlier, it's a, it's a one of the most. Am, I got to tell you, one of the most amazing things was when the plays came out for warmups. I kept thinking I was seeing you. Uh, all the guys were wearing number nine, which uh, <laughs> I thought was a terrific idea. Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't. I, I was actually signing autographs before the game, and Maureen Brady had all these number nine jerseys, and, and I said, "Where the heck did you get all these number nine jerseys from?" She and she looked at me with this dumb look in her face, and she said, "He obviously doesn't know where I go." All these from. So it was kind of funny to see all the guys wearing the same jersey. It was a, a big tribute. We're going to flash back to game six against the Philadelphia Flyers. This is known as the uh, famed offside goal, and you were involved in this play. Mm -hmm. You got the assist. Tell me about it. <laughs> I, guess it's, I guess it was clearly <laughs> offside from the looks of that shot. Uh, it happened so fast. I, I, I made a move to the, to the boards and dropped it back to Butchie, and he brought it in so quickly that Leon Stickle didn't even realize it had gone over the blue line. Made a great pass to Dwayne Sutter and then a great shot. Uh, but all they ever talk about is the offside. But it was a great goal, other than the fact that it was two feet offside. Well, <laughs> uh, the winning, the winning of the Stanley Cup, uh, everybody wants to know how you react at a certain point. Now, here's the pass to Nystrom. What was your reaction? Where were you? I was sitting on the end of the bench by the door on the right side of the bench, and uh, I, I really didn't jump off the bench at that time. It was, it was a feeling of elation, and I just wanted to sit there. Bobby's been quoted as saying, well, I was just glad it was over, and, and that's the feeling I had. It had been real hell for about six weeks, and uh, uh, just the, to see that goal go in that really meant one thing, that we were done and we were the champions. Well, tonight in the ceremonies, there were uh, a couple of real surprises, but one more than other uh, coach of yours when you were a kid, Hunter, yeah. what did he mean to you? Well, John was a guy that, uh, there he is sitting up there, uh, he was a guy that was very, very important to me. Uh, he took me under his wing. Uh, he was, he was, I think, more than, than a coach. He was a, a real good friend. And after my father had died, he became, a, uh, and, and was before, but, but really helped my mother a tremendous deal. He was a great family friend and, and continues to this day. We, uh, we love him dearly and we're glad that we can have him here tonight. I must tell some of the fans that uh, Clark is one of the best joke tellers I've ever heard. You, I told one of your jokes, the dog joke today, which we won't get into the <laughs> joke, but one of the fans was ask, asking me whether you were always this funny when you were a rookie you know, in the first two years the way you are now. I think so. I, I, uh, my attitude was, you know, go out there and have a good time. I, I got serious when I got on the ice, but I think it took right up until game time before I really got serious about what was going on up there. This, you know, life is, is pretty short, and if you can't have a good time along the way, you're going to miss some things. And uh, I made sure, and, and I have made sure, and I will make sure that I'm going to have a good time for the rest of my life. If I wasn't wor worried about falling off this chair, I'd give you a hug, because that's <laughs> the way all the Islander fans feel about this guy, the great Clark Gillies. We'll have more of 
the Between Period Show right after this break and a devastating trivia question. Stay tuned. Everybody, and it's time for our Nissan Trivia Quiz. Now, Stan, I'm here to, uh, to help you out on this one because I've heard you had a little bit of trouble lately on the uh, trivia question. And I answer everything Darren Pooper from now on. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm going to be right. <laughs> okay, let's check out the question. We'll see what we have for you tonight. How many other players wore number nine for the Islanders besides Clark Gillies? That's easy. Oh, uh, wait, you can't. No, 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 no. You can't say anything yet. You got to wait till in between the second and the third. I know it wasn't Darren Pooper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll be back with lots more Maybe right works. after this. Scoring in the first period, but Eddie, there was some goaltending. Oh, yeah, not, uh, not, it wasn't heavy, but it was uh, times here that we thought maybe something would end up in the net. Whoa, good stop there. Tommy Sallow, more and more his confidence. Look at down low. Beautiful play here as he stayed in front of Housley. And look at this beautiful move here. Travis Green, good stop by Carey. Look at the second effort. He's not satisfied. The puck's there, he's rolling. Gives his players a chance in front of the net, but Carey got the puck out of there. Some of the action at both ends of the ice. Clark Gillies, he's everywhere, he's everywhere. Yeah, and that's Mike Milbury's music. We got Cohen too, where's the coach? He's coming out. Oh, and it's intended, yeah, of course, it's intended, well, 